Japan's Noyori Inoue is one of the most devastating punchers in the world. Ahead of his bout with Marlon Tapales on Boxing Day, here's everything you need to know about the monster. So let's start off all the way back in 2014 for Noyoya Inoue's first world championship win. In just his sixth fight, Inoue picked up the WBC's light flyweight title with a very impressive six round stoppage win over Adrian Hernandez. And it was just two fights later that we saw Inoue jump up to super flyweight to win the WBO championship against long reigning champion Omar Narvez in the second round. And since then, it's been nothing but glory for Nayoya in a way, racking up an incredible record of 25 wins, no losses, and 22 wins coming by knockout. After the win over Omar Narvez, Inoue went 7-0 with six knockouts in defenses of his WBO Super Flyweight title before moving up to bantamweight to knock out Jamie McDonnell and pick up the WBA title in the first round. After destroying Jamie McDonnell in the first round, Inoue entered the World Boxing Super Series, where we really started to see his star power grow. In the first round, he boxed former WBA bantamweight champion Juan Carlos Payano, knocking him out cold inside 70 seconds. Up next for Inoue was the IBF bantamweight champion the unbeaten Emmanuel Rodriguez who at the time was 19-0 and many people had predicted he would give Inoue his toughest test as a professional. However Inoue had other ideas knocking Emmanuel Rodriguez down three times en route to a sensational second round stoppage win. Following the win over Emmanuel Rodriguez Inoue would move to the final of the World Boxing Super Series taking on Filipino ring legend Nonito Donaire. Now, this was about that many people expected Inoue to blow through Nonito Donaire after his wins over Rodriguez and Payano, but Donaire, the great champion that he always has been, had other ideas, breaking Nayoya Inoue's eye socket in about why many people had described as the fight of the year. However, Inoue proved that he was more than just an offensive puncher, boxing well on the outside and really controlling the bout for large portions of the contest. Inoue, despite suffering that injury, won and won in convincing fashion to pick up the World Boxing Super Series title. After the win over Nanito Donaire, Inoue would go on to make three defenses of the WBA and IBF bantamweight titles, all coming by way of stoppage against Jason Maloney, Michael Dasmarenas, and Aaron Dipayen before the rematch, the one that everybody wanted to see. Naoya Inoue versus Nanito Donaire 2. This time, however, it went very, very differently. Noya in a way set about Donaire from the first bell, scoring an early knockdown before ruthlessly bringing the fight to a close in the second round. After the win over Nanito Donaire, Noya in a way was in possession of three of the four major world titles, so it was only right that he would go for undisputed. Up next was the WBO champion Paul Butler, who traveled over to Japan as a massive underdog, and so it proved to be on the night, with Inoue dominating from the opening bell before scoring the 11th round stoppage. Now with the win, Inoue became the first Japanese fighter in the four belt era to become undisputed champion and the first four belt undisputed champion in the history of the bantamweight division. Following the win over Paul Butler, Inoue would vacate all of his bantamweight titles as he moved up to super bantamweight and sought to become a four weight world champion. Now Inoue, as we all know and love, is only interested in the biggest possible opportunities and stepped up to take on cool boy Steph, Stephen Fulton, the unified super bantamweight world champion in his first fight at the weight. Now it's important to remember that a lot of people picked Stephen Fulton to potentially be the first man to defeat Naira in a way. He was an unbeaten fighter, a very slick, skillful fighter in his own right, and of course, naturally bigger than Inoue. However, Fulton's credentials counted for little on the night, with Inoue dominating the fight from the first bell, getting behind the jab, really showcasing his pound-for-pound -pound boxing skills before a beautiful right hand, followed by a leaping left hook sent Stephen Fulton down in the eighth. Fulton, to his credit, did drag himself up, but as we all know and have come to expect from Nayoya in a way, he is a merciless finisher, jumping all over Stephen Fulton and forcing the stoppage to become a four-weight world champion. So that's how we got to where we are today, with Inoue just one fight away from becoming undisputed champion at super bantamweight. It would be a fantastic achievement and the second undisputed title for Inoue in two different weights in just over a year. To put Inoue's achievements into context, 
context, this will be his 21st world title fight in just 26 professional bouts, meaning only five of Inoue's bouts so far have not been for a world title. I do expect Naya Inoue to win and win well against Marlon Tapalas this weekend, becoming the undisputed super bantamweight champion in the process. So sit back on Boxing Day, crack open the celebrations, and watch one of the very best fighters of his generation, the monster, Naoya Inoue. So that's everything you need to know about the monster, Naoya Inoue. Let us know your Inoue Tapales prediction in the comments, and we'll catch up with you next time.